Hey there, Husker fans. Happy signing day. I'm Sam McEwen along with Evan Bland. Uh, we are talking about our favorite signings in the Nebraska 2021 class. It's December 16th, 2020, um, and there's still a football game to be played in the regular season on, thir- on Friday. Uh, but, hey, it's a big week recruiting. Nebraska's uh, poised to sign another top 25 class. Uh, it's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good group. And uh, thanks to the good folks at Nebraska Spine Hospital, we're going to talk a little bit um, just about our favorite signees in the class. And this may change a little bit over the next couple of months, uh, but we're kind of going to go through our top five uh, at this particular moment. Um, there's going to be a couple of players who, who um, announce on January 2nd. I anticipate maybe one or two of those guys being in this class, uh, but, uh, but we don't have those right now. And so our, our, our answers may change a little bit. Uh, by by mid January, but I think this is kind of the snapshot of where we're at right now. And so we're each going to give our top five. We'll kind of alternate five, four, three, two, one, and talk a little bit about the players in the class. Evan, give me your number five. All right. Well, I think first of all, it's it's notable, uh, you know, kind of how we come to these conclusions. To me, it's not just these guys in a vacuum. It's these guys mixed with kind of what does Nebraska need. And so that's kind of how I factored into this but for me number five was uh, Randolph Kapai outside linebacker from South Dakota uh, you know he was a guy who committed pretty early in the cycle and I think sometimes when guys do that you you, you kind of forget about him a little bit but he had a monster senior season 79 tackles in 10 games uh, four interceptions three forced fumbles I mean the guy was a playmaker uh, had a lot of strong offers out there if he was still a, an available guy uh, he'd be blowing up but Nebraska locked him down early and had a position that they've struck out on a lot recently. Uh, that's somebody I like to come in and at some point make a difference for Big Red. I like Kapai too. Uh, he had a, a he, he had outside linebackers a junior, inside linebackers a senior. He's got great versatility. My number five is Kobe Bretts, the Omaha West Side safety. Um, I think Kobe is an elite athlete. Uh, he is um, very light on his feet. And there's, there's, there's such a value in being a light athlete whose steps are not heavy. He doesn't stumble a lot. He's not running. He's not over keeled over top going down. And some of that's because he grew up in gymnastics and diving and you can see it. You can see the balance. You can see the way that he plays the game. I think Nebraska should give him a look at receiver, but I suspect that they're going to look at him more as a nickelback, similar to what Jojo Doman's doing or potentially a safety, but I really like Kobe Bretz's game, man. He, he, he moves across the field beautifully. And I think if he embraces the techniques and the sport, the way that it suits him, I think Nebraska got a steal in the West side safety. That's my number five. Who's your number four, Evan? Number four, I went with uh, Marquise Buford, the defensive back who's, uh, who spent his postgraduate year up in Connecticut at St. Thomas Moore originally from Chicago, went down to Cedar Hills, Trinity Christian in Texas for his junior and senior year. Uh, you know, he was a guy that I think Nebraska was really fortunate to get in a lot of ways. They had some, some interesting connections there. I mean, Buford was committed to Florida State for a long time. Uh, when they fired their staff, he decided to go the post-grad route, but he knew current Nebraska freshman Alante Brown from their time in Chicago together. And so that relationship really jump-started kind of his recruiting process with Nebraska. He's the top-rated post-grad player in this cycle in 2021. Uh, And and you just kind of look at what he did, especially down in Texas. I mean, he was coached by Deion Sanders and Kevin Mathis, two great NFL players, uh, you know, at that position. And then in just talking with the coaches, I mean, they moved him all around. He could, he could play linebacker, corner safety, depending on the opponent. He had a, a, what they call an elite understanding of uh, defense and kind of how everything plays together. So uh, he has the, the physical tools, the mental tools all come together. Um, and you look at how kind of senior laden this uh, Nebraska secondary is right now. A lot of the attrition they've had with some of the younger players at that spot. He's somebody uh, who has that versatility to come in, I think, and play pretty early. Yeah. My number four is Randolph Kapai. Uh, he is an interesting player. I think that the way that I would describe him is ultra fast ultra instinctive is around the ball a lot. And again, a guy that just moves really well. Um, He grew up playing soccer. I think some of that translates a little bit, his instincts and the way in which he just kind of moves across the football field 
is pretty to watch. Now it's going to take a couple of years because he's probably 190 pounds and they need to put some weight on him uh, to kind of get him where he needs to be. Um, but simultaneously just kind of a playmaker. And that particular school has been good to Nebraska. Uh, produced uh, Nathan Gary back in the day and obviously Matt Farniak. I'm not saying that Kapai is going to be as good as Gary was. Gary was uh, a physical and very natural football player. But I think kapai has got a lot of potential, and, and I think he can fit into that linebacker room either at outside or inside. They really need to somebody to fill in it inside because Colin Miller and Will Honus – um, either, whether they come back or not, they're not going to be around in 2022 and Nebraska's going to really have to start thinking hard about who they're going to put there. So um, I think Kapai is a guy that's going to be a factor. Maybe it won't be until 2023, uh, but I like his potential. Who's your number three, Evan? Number three, I went with Gabe Irvin, the running back out of Buford, Georgia. I mean, he was a guy who, who popped in the middle of the summer uh, as far as being a Nebraska commit, surprised uh, you know, a lot of people who follow Nebraska recruiting closely, he's been pretty quiet, but he has such an interesting game. I think his his uh, running style is a lot different than what Nebraska currently has in its running back room. He's a guy, a between-the-tackles guy, a power runner, um, you know, has kind of a, a, a gliding long stride to him that's a little bit different. Uh, what, what's interesting about him to me, too, is he plays at a powerhouse there at Buford, uh, where he rotates with a lot of guys. They don't necessarily ask him to do everything the way that a playmaker at a smaller school might. So it feels like there's even some untapped potential there for him, especially in the passing game, maybe around the edge. But, uh, you know, just given what Nebraska's running back situation has been, they're trying to find somebody who could be that guy after Diedrich Mills uh, leaves, whenever that might be. Um, you know, Irvin has a different kind of build, and I think he has the versatility to come in and make things really interesting pretty quickly. Mm, that's a good one. My number three is the mountain man from Mount Pleasant, Iowa, Henry Lutovsky. Um, I think Lutovsky is a giant human being and simultaneously um, a guy that could come in and play pretty, pretty quickly. You're not going to say that Henry needs to put on weight. Uh, he is the proper weight as it is. Uh, he's 6'5". Six five and a half, three thirty, uh, probably a guard, uh, somebody who can move the earth. Uh, he's got pretty good explosiveness for a guy his size, and he's got good strength. And I think when you look at linemen uh, who kind of come in physically ready, I think Henry is that guy. Um, I think he has the potential to play actually very early. Uh, some of these other guys maybe had to gain some weight or were a little raw. I think honestly, Lutuzzi is a guy uh, who can play pretty quickly at Nebraska now. That's, can he move well enough? That's something they'll have to figure out, but uh, it won't surprise me one bit if uh, you see him making a big push at right guard next year. So Henry Litovsky is my number three. Who's your number two, Evan? Uh, my number two is Henry Litovsky. Uh, for, for a lot of the reasons that you mentioned, he, he's a kind of a, a more of a ready-made guy on the line, uh, but I think also his intangibles in a lot of ways remind me of Garrett Nelson from a couple of years ago. I mean, he's right. fiery. He was one of the lead peer recruiters in this class, which, you know, for an offensive lineman can be a little bit unusual, but he, he took that role. Um, you know, he, he posts some dunk videos to kind of talk to your point about uh, explosiveness. I mean, he, he can get up and, and smash that thing through. Um, and I think he just has that, that kind of nasty that you want in, a, in an offensive lineman. Like he just, he just, doesn't care. He's going to come up, he's going to move you, and that's going to be the end of it. And so I think that attitude is going to play into it. And then, like you said, uh, you look at Nebraska's interior line situation moving forward. I mean, I think you, you feel good about uh, Ethan Piper at that interior spot, but uh, there are a number of other positions that are going to be coming open, and I think he's got a chance to jump in there pretty soon. And uh, he's one of those kind of glue guys or culture guys, I think, that could really uh, be a good asset to the locker room situation too. My number two also comes from the linebacker room, and his name is Makai Bayer out of Irvington, New Jersey. Um, he is a very productive player. So he is one of the best players in New Jersey. There's no argument about that. His offers were interesting, right? So um, a lot of times in New Jersey, the, the highest level of recruit gets offers from Michigan, Penn State, oftentimes. But he didn't get those, but he got he – got, Ole Miss and Indiana and Rutgers and Nebraska and Cincinnati. And I'll tell you what, 
You rattle off those five teams, those five teams have athletes, especially the four that aren't Nebraska. They have players in those programs. Uh, you tell me that Ole Miss is interested in Indiana and Cincinnati. Those guys know what they're looking for in terms of athletic playmakers, and I think this guy fits the bill. He had a hugely productive season despite not having a lot of games. Uh, that has been true now for a couple of seasons, really two and a half seasons there been their best defensive player and I think he's going to come in and again be able to potentially play right away he's different than Kapai who I think is going to take a couple of years I think this guy Bayer could play right away um, and they may need him right away um, it's possible he could be a guy that that kicks over and, and plays as a, a true freshman or a redshirt freshman quite a bit I compare him favorably to former Husker Avery Roberts who went to Oregon State and has become a very good player there I think this guy's a little bit better. He's a little quicker. I think Roberts was a little slower. But I compare him favorably to that, and everybody loved Roberts when he signed at Nebraska. Evan, who's your number one? I think I can guess, but who is it? Yeah, I think most people probably could. It's it's Thomas Fedoni from uh, Council Bluffs, Lewis Central. Tight end, the third highest rated Nebraska recruit in the last decade behind Tyjon Lindsay and Turner Corcoran. Uh, you know, he there's just a lot to like about him. I mean, he comes in at a position of need. You look at what Nebraska has done with tight ends, you know, under Frost. They have juniors, they have seniors, but they moved Cam Jurgens. Once a tight end recruit to center, they moved Chris Hickman. Once a tight end recruit to, to receiver. Um, so this is somebody that they can bring in who they really feel like fits what they want to do offensively. He has a massive catch radius. Uh, physically, he has been dedicating himself uh, daily in the weight room for years, and you can tell uh, in just how he carries himself on the field. And, uh, you know, he, he, he kind of like Latusky has that attitude. Like he, he grew up a Husker fan. Um, he just, he, he feels like he's the best. And even at the absolute minimum, um, if, if, if it doesn't turn out for him long-term, and I think it will, but if it doesn't, just the, the recruiting momentum that comes to Nebraska when you secure the number one tight end in the cycle, uh, turning down offers from LSU and all over the place, uh, getting into the state of Iowa, all those things will benefit Nebraska, even if, Fedoni doesn't explode like I think he will. This is someone else who can immediately upgrade Nebraska's pass game, give, give a big target to those quarterbacks, and uh, you know somebody who's going to make an impact pretty soon. I want to give a nod just to, I think, what I think is the overall strength of the class, and not just because it's ranked fairly well, um, but I think, it's a, I think it's a class full of a, of a lot of pretty good athletes who are really good players and have an edge to them. I think that's true of a lot of guys in the class. And so even though they're not my number one, I want to mention Teddy Prohaska and James Carney as two guys that I think are going to come yeah. to be leaders in the room. And uh, over time, those are going to be guys that we interview a hundred times because they I, have been identified as guys that are leaders. Um, it is the sign of the strength of this class that I put people like Kapai and Lutovsky and Bayer above them, but I think those two particular guys are worth tipping your cap to because I think they're going to be um, really, really good contributors to Nebraska. But my number one is Fedoni, and I think he's earned that. Uh, he is a dynamic athlete. Uh, he is an aggressive player down the field, willing to put his body on the line. Um, I think that's going to be interesting at times for him in the in the Big Ten. Uh, some of the things that I think he he does at the Iowa level are going to earn him some blast shots from Big Ten safeties, and he'll have to get used to that um, because sometimes he can't always do lay out the way that he does. Uh, but he's an he really is a great catcher of the football. Um, if you're thinking about reasonable comps in the Big Ten, I got to be honest, there aren't a ton. Um, I'd like to say T.J. Ha you know uh, Hawkinson. But I think Fedoni's faster than that, and I don't think he's quite as uh, maybe physical as as Hawkinson is. Uh, Jake Ferguson at Wisconsin might be a pretty good comp, and I think Ferguson's going to be a top three NFL draft pick, top three rounds here in a couple of years. Um, not sure Nebraska's had a ton of comps, but Mike McNeil might be somebody who comes to mind, and Mike was a hell of a player for Nebraska uh, several years ago in a similar flex-out role. Uh, and if Thomas is as good as Kyler Reed was, uh, then Nebraska's getting a really, really good player because Kyler was great at Nebraska. So I guess my my mid-level for Thomas is Kyler Reed, and if he gets better than that, we're getting into Johnny Mitchell territory. And, uh, of course, Johnny's the best tight end Nebraska ever had, and if Thomas Fedoni is that good, 
then he's going to be an All-American because that's what Johnny was. So um, it, the bar is set high for Nebraska tight ends. It actually is. Like over the years, they've had so many good ones that Thomas isn't going to crack into that top three just by showing up on campus. You're talking the Mitchells. You're talking Nate Turner. You're talking William Washington as a blocker. Tracy Wistrom, Sheldon Jackson, Junior Miller, elite, elite tight ends over the years. So it's going to take some work for Fedoni to get into that top group, but I actually think he has the ability to do it. And again, if we're talking about Thomas Fedoni in five years as somebody who's approaching, just approaching the work of Johnny Mitchell, Nebraska's done well there. So um, I think it's a strong class, and I think he is a strong top recruit in that class. Well, Evan, uh, that's all we've got for our top five signees. Again, we reserve the right to change that uh, in three or four weeks when Nebraska maybe adds a few more players uh, to its class. But for Evan Bland, I'm Sam McEwen. Thanks to the folks at Nebraska Spine Hospital for our signing day uh, preview.